Hi there, this is a tutorial on how to connect to Synapse Analytics, dedicated pool and Synapse Analytics serverless pool to work out of. Basically I have a little nice recipes that can both create or run SQL queries and also of course get data. Uh, if you are not aware, the difference between those is the dedicated pool, pool from what I understand can also support real like SQL tables and serverless pool only can fetch data from things like csv files from your data lake right so the tables it has there is are not really real tables and if we just uh, check it quickly how it looks on the uh, azure side right so this is what i have right now i have the scale pools in my synapse workspace analytics one that is built in that is serverless and then another one that created this dedicated pool and as an example here is a query example from my dedicated pool, which just returned some values from a table. And this is how it looks like. It's under the table usernames. And there are something that's called external tables. So this is when Synapse is fetching data actually from your blob storage, uh, like CSV file or whatever you decided external uh, data was. And here in the a serverless one it only supports external tables so this is basically uh, what i'm telling now to synapse is go ahead and fetch those five csv files merge them together and return them uh, as a table so it's it's also read only right so you cannot write or add any data to there so hey, let's let's see how we connect to both of them in workaro so the first thing you need to do is you log into workaro and then you go and find on-premise groups so what we need this for is that uh, Workaro GD uses GDBC driver and it requires uh, basically an VM or an instance that you connect from Workaro that will forward those calls through the GDBC driver. So how you set this up, you go here and create a new, let's say Synapse GDBC um, group. You need to be right now as I am on a VM that, for example, I have spinned up a Win Windows machine here that I will install it. It can also be Linux, Mac or Docker container. And we call this Synap Agent 1. All right, we go here and say yes and download the installer. And you see the agent by default will be installed in C program files or kind of agent. We go to next. First, we'll hit the install here. Install. We'll call this synapse agent one. Go to next. Go to next. 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 And then it will install this as a service. All right, then we will need an activation code here. So you see there's activation code. This is on the second screen and you hit next button. If you don't get this activation code to work as I did here, it means that your VM doesn't have an internet access or you need to let um, Workato out basically to ping uh, the, the data center. So if you are located in the US, Workaro needs to ping the US data center to grab the encryption key, which is this activation code, what it does in the background. If it doesn't work for you, you will have to look in the Workaro logs that are generated in the agent. So how you do that is you go to C here in uh, your program files, your VM agent that we just created. So this is a Synapse agent. And here we have a couple of logs that will be generated in case you have an error. And what they will tell you those logs is that um, there is something wrong and we cannot ping uh, Workato's instance to download the key, so you will have to open it. And how you find that, oh, not DeviantArt, docs, workato.com, whitelist IP, let's see. My browser is lagging a little bit because I'm on a VM. So let's open that and you see there should be a link here on what you need to whitelist. So you see here, on-premise agent gateway OPA 
version. So if you are a US instance, this is those are the two URLs that Workout is trying to ping from on-premise. If you are in new instance, this is the two and so on. All right, for me, it worked fine. So let's go next. So now I was on that screen, I will go to next and I will need to test the agent. So how you test the agent is you need to go to services. So if you're on Windows, it has been installed in services. If you're on Linux or Mac, you need to read the documentation docsworkata.com and then we'll start. That's the, 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 that's the only thing you need to do here. Just start that agent. So it can forward the calls through GDBC drop. Uh, it takes a couple of seconds for it to activate. Let's see, test, test. There you go, ready. Takes like 10 seconds. So now you should be seeing something like this, right? So status active, whatever version you're using, and that you have one agent. If you want, you can install a couple of agents if you want to have like a failover setup, but I will just be uh, using one agent. And now what you should do is hit the reload this page in your uh, browser. And the reason is that those <laughs> agent lists, they will be cached in the recipe, so they will not be visible otherwise. So hit the reload once. There you go. So now what we can do is we'll create a new project and call this GDBC uh, demo. And inside here, we we'll connect another folder. It's called connect connections. And then another one, our recipes synapse. So let's go and create a new recipe. So recipe. And then I'll select run on schedule so I can just test it very quickly. And this will be our example one dedicated pool GDBC to uh, Synapse. Okay. And then what I will do, I will get, do a new action in an app and select GDBC. All right. And what I will do is I will run a custom SQL query. And then I will create a new connection. You see, I have already a previous connection I've created, but I will create a new connection so you can see from scratch what I'm doing. Okay, so let's call this example one dedicated pool. So here, uh, let's see, if you don't see our this group, this means again, you need to refresh your browser. But otherwise, you should be able to see the group that we just created, which is, in my case, it is the Synapse GDBC group. So perfect. And now we need to fill in things like uh, GDBC uh, connection URL. I'll show you how you get that from Azure. Your driver class name, I'll show you how to find it on the internet. And your username, password, and nothing else needs to be unless you need to have some additional options. So let's find this one, GDBC connection URL for dedicated pool. So first, let's go to Azure. We will go to our SQL pools under Synapse Workspace. And you see I have a dedicated pool here. I will open it. And right here, there was something that's called connection string. So we'll open that one. And GDBC. And here, I will just copy this connection string as it is. So there are a couple of things I need to change, right? So uh, your, your username, Oh, sorry, I will, I will take this one, not Microsoft Entry Authentication. I will take SQL Authentication visit because this is exactly what you need, SQL Authentication. So you see that I already pre-filled my username and the password is something that I need to pre-fill myself. Uh, now, for the purpose of the, this demo, I created a very simple password. So in case you are scared here that I'm typing my password in clear text, don't be because I will delete this instance of the program. So what I will do, we'll just open Notepad, paste my password in here, select it again, go to Workato, paste it in here, just validate that I have dedicated pool, SQL user, password, yeah, that's correct. Driver class name, how do you find that? So the best way I found that is just Googling GDBC SQL server class name, and the first link I got is to Stack Overflow. So hopefully you in the future can see that as well, but it's this thing. There you go. Uh, Microsoft SQL Server, GDBC SQL Server driver. Then you need to put your username again for Caro. Go. There you go. And let's hit the connect button. 
All right, magic happened, it worked. So now you have the run custom SQL. Of course, you can you can test other features here, but run custom SQL is for me the, the easiest because I have a couple of queries that are already ready for testing. So first I will go and test this one. I'll remove the top 100, just test it as it is, save. Uh, in case you need to have a schema, right? So, it, so that uh, your uh, SQL query is mappable, you will need to add the, the schema, the fields uh, manually here. So for example, how you do that is you do it like this, identifier name, and you want also first name, for example, right? Then Locato will map the schema for you automatically. Uh, if you need parameters, I know I don't, I will just run it as it is, just test if it works. There we go. So we can inspect it. Uh, and there we go. That's my two records that I had. So we can quickly validate. Yep, that's the two records that I had here. Uh, we can test quickly if the inserts also work. So we do maybe another GDBC and then run custom SQL and then I will test an insert. So I have this script here that does some insertion. So quickly do some inserting the username and then let's see ID 88 and then we have an acid classic Knutson this time. Let's move it up so that first it will do the insert and then we'll do the, uh, the select query. Let's test this. All right, looks like it has done the insert, more row affected. And I see now three records and I can validate, of course, that in my database. There you go, you have three records. So both writing and reading works. That is good. So now let's do the other one, which is the uh, the serverless pool, which is very similar. So let's go here, uh, example two. Serverless pool in Synapse, uh, read only, right? So the reason why it's read only, as I explained, because serverless pool usually has external tables and it only fetches things uh, that are already in the file. So you cannot really do any manipulation on top of that. That's just how data lake system works. So it's not like a work out thing. All right, let's do GDBC again. GDBC, we do uh, run custom SQL, and then we'll create a new dedicated connection. And this will be my example two, server less pool. I will select my on-premise again and do this thing. So now I need to manipulate it uh, once because that, that is now totally different pool. So what I need to change is exchange this part to my serverless pool. So how do I find that? I'll go to back to my Synapse, back to here, my workspace instance actually. Because for, for some reason, yeah, I cannot I cannot click on the built-in serverless because I think it's it's a built-in feature inside uh, analytics and workspace itself. And here's where I find the serverless SQL endpoint. Like this, right? So Synapse, so instead of Synapse 3, I have Synapse on demand. Save. And then I'll copy this entire thing, paste it in here. Again, I will need to have the driver class name and my uh, username. Oop. There we go. There we go. Let's see. Yeah. Well, okay, that was a, a wrong pool. Uh, all right, what 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 happened here is that I forgot to exchange my database pool to something else. What I actually need to do is I need to go back to my uh, here 
and I see that the database is actually called MCAM demo. So that that is why why, why I gave the, got this error. So MQM demo is a database, not our previous dedicated full database. So let's do this again. There you go. And then we can do some query. So I have a query for my uh, SQL pool that basically creates this table based on a C3 file that I have in my data lake. So I'll just take that, paste that in here, hit save. And there you go. That's all my, I have those double quotes because I actually set this up in a not very correct way. And then if you try to do GDBC, but you try to, let's say, insert things into this, right? But you, you probably, if you're familiar with this, you probably already know what I'm talking about, but let's just try it out so that you understand that it's not the, uh, it's not because of Lucaro or, or something like that. Right? Let's run this one. Uh, I should get an error that the insertion are not supported in terms of invalid object name. Actually, that was what I wanted to have as a, uh, this one. Insert into, there you go, our external table. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to insert into external table. That is this one. And there you go. We have the DML operation that's supported in external tables, which makes sense because I cannot really modify my uh, CSV file that I have here anyway. And that's it. Uh, that's the, what you need to do. So you need to use a GBC driver. Uh, it might be in the future that Workado will, will develop okay, a dedicated connector, like there is one for SQL Server. But right now, GDBC driver is, is enough to do most of the things that you will need to do in Synapse. Uh, I don't have a video on explaining how to do this thing in, in the version of um, Fabric, but from what I understood, uh, so if we go to um, Microsoft, Fabric, GDBC, it is possible to create the GBDC connection from Fabric as well. I know there are some threads about it, like how do you do that? Because it was a little bit confusing on how to find uh, the endpoints that, that you needed to connect to this. Uh, but it looks like they, they have some documentation that they are linking now on how to do it from, from Fabric. So I hope you had some have some luck how to connect in Fabric, but just so you also understand, uh, the Synapse database in the Fabric is the same Synapse database. It's just that it's spinned up as a as a package solution that is called Microsoft Fabric. Well, good luck for you to connecting this later.